Hi there. So we are going to discuss 1.1, um, just the beginning of it. Um, so 1.1 is the characteristics of functions. So for this part one video, we're only going to discuss our interval notation and the type of interval that it is and talking about domain and range and writing it in those different uh, notations. So here we go. Um, if our given interval is all real numbers from A to B, including those numbers A and B, we know that that is a bounded interval. And it's bounded because it's finite. What does that mean? It means it starts and it stops at a real number. It has a um, specific measurement, if you will. So that is going to be a bounded interval. The way that we can write that in inequality notation is it's that it's all the x's that are greater than or equal to A and less than or equal to B. Um, this is something that you should be familiar with in a previous class, maybe seventh, eighth grade, probably algebra one. So that's that inequality notation, using those greater than, less than, greater than or equal to, or less than or equal to symbols there. Set notation, if you notice, it might look a little strange, a little different, a little new, but if you notice after that vertical line, you're seeing the exact same thing that we have in inequality notation. And that's always the case. The way that we read set notation is we read it as, it's the set of all x's such that a is less than or equal to x is less than or equal to b. So the set are those curly brackets that you see at the beginning and the end. So we're starting with the set of all x's such that. That vertical line is always going to read such that. So it's the set of all x's such that a is less than or equal to x is less than or equal to b. Okay? Interval notation is the one that we're probably most comfortable and most confident in using, and that's the one that we'll typically ask for a majority of the time, but we could ask for any type of notation. Interval notation, we're going to be using those parentheses and those brackets. Think back to inequality. If we were using just a greater than or less than symbol, we're not including those, um, those endpoints, if you will that would constitute using a parenthesis parenthesis in interval notation. If we use the greater than or equal to or less than or equal to, then we are including those beginning and ending values. So we are going to be using a bracket for that interval notation. So because we are including the A and the B values, we are going to use a bracket A to B bracket. We always want to go in order from left to right, um, least to greatest. So uh, A and then B. So going to the next one, all real numbers that are greater than A. Notice that it's from A on up. So it is an infinite amount. It is an unbounded interval because there's no way that we can measure that. It is unbounded. So how would we write that in inequality notation? All real numbers that are greater than A? Well, all real numbers that are greater than A. And that's it. Set notation is going to be very easy for us because we're going to take that inequality notation and simply put it in those fancy curly brackets. Remember that reads, it's the set of all x's such that x is greater than a. Because we're not including that a value, notice we're just using a greater than and not a greater than or equal to, we are going to be using parentheses here. Because we want the numbers that are bigger than or greater than A, that means A is our smallest value and we're going all the way to infinity. Notice infinity, infinite, okay? Next one is all real numbers less than or equal to A. Less than or equal to, very important. So do you think that's bounded or unbounded? All real numbers less than or equal to A. That would be unbounded because I want everything from A and then less than that. That is an infinite amount of numbers, so that is unbounded. How would we write that in inequality notation? All of those numbers that are less than or equal to A. You can write it as you read it. Set notation the set of all x's such that x is less than or equal to a. Now in this particular problem, what is our smallest value that we can use? 
Well, that's negative infinity because we want all the numbers less than or equal to a. So we can keep going into that negative realm more and more and more and more. So our smallest number per se is that negative infinity and we're going all the way up to a and we are including that a value. So we can use a bracket there. So it is possible that we could use two brackets, two parentheses, or a parenthesis and a bracket. And as you probably guessed, it would be possible to do something like this. As long as infinity is not in the front, let's say infinity would be at the back. Or it could be some number, just depends. The next couple of intervals that are given to you, notice they are gonna be on a number line. The first three were using words, the last four are on a number line. Pay really close attention to if those um, dots on those certain um, numbers are open or shaded. And then of course, if the arrow is shaded as well. So this is gonna be, I think, easier for you to decide if it's bounded or unbounded, because if it has that start and stopping point, then you know that it's bounded. And if you know that if either one of those arrows are shaded, it's unbounded. So in this first case, I see it starting at negative three, I see it going all the way up to four, so I know that it's bounded. How would I write that in um, inequality notation? Well, where am I starting? I'm starting at negative three, and I want all the numbers greater than or equal to that all the way up to four. Notice I'm not using the equal to for four because it's an open circle. Set notation, really easy. The set of all x's such that negative three is less than or equal to x is less than four. And then our interval notation. Negative three is our smallest number and we're going all the way up to four. Are we including the negative three? Yes, so we use the bracket. Are we including the four? No, so we use the parentheses. This would be a great time for you to pause and try to do the next three on your own. I'm gonna go ahead and keep going now. So the, um, the next one, I see that that arrow is shaded on the left, so I know that this is gonna be unbounded. I see that it's all the numbers that are less than or equal to three, so it's all my x values that are less than or equal to three. The set of all x's such that x is less than or equal to three. My smallest number is negative infinity. My biggest number is three. I can never ever include negative infinity because it never ends. Am I including the three? Yes, I am because it's a solid dot. The next one is bounded. You got it. It starts and it stops. I'm going from negative four to six. Both of those starting and ending points are open circles, so they are not included in the inequality. Set notation, set of all x's such that negative four is less than x is less than six. Smallest number is negative four. My big is just six. I am not including either of those values, so double parentheses. And then the last one. Notice for this one, the whole entire number line is shaded except for one point, one number is not included. So because both of the arrows are shaded, we definitely know that it's unbounded. And instead of putting like all real numbers except for four here, that's essentially what we're gonna say, but we wanna use our inequality set and interval notation properly. How do you think we can properly use inequality notation if we wanna say that we're including all the numbers except for four? Well, I want everything except for four. I want X not equal to four. If I say X cannot be four, then I'm telling you it can be any other number that it wants or that you want it to be. The set of all X's such that X cannot equal four or doesn't equal four. Now our interval notation is gonna be a little strange. For the interval notation here, I'm gonna zoom in if that's okay with you guys. Think about what our smallest number is. It's negative infinity. We can never include negative infinity. Reading from left to right, we're going from negative infinity all the way up to the number four. But are we including four? No, we're not, parenthesis. Then we start back up again. We have a second set, if you will. So we need to join those with a union. So this is gonna read, it's from negative infinity to four and 
from four to infinity. That U is the symbol for union, which means and. Moving on to domain and range. These are words that you've hopefully already heard before. Domain, as we know, are the X values, and we wanna read them from left to right in interval notation. Range is the Y values, and we read from bottom to top in interval notation. Remember, it's always smallest to largest, okay? So just by looking at the picture, what I want us to do is we're gonna write the domain and the range of the graph in interval notation. So notice I specify here, I'm only worried about interval notation, only worried about this last column here. We also need to tell whether the graph is a function or not. Hopefully you know the trick of telling if a graph is a function just by looking at it. Do you know? It's the vertical line test. So if we can draw a vertical line anywhere on that graph and it only goes through the graph one time, then that means it's a function. A function is a graph that um, for every specific input or X value, there is only one Y value. Okay, so looking at the first one, I can write my domain and range, or I can start off by deciding if it's a function or not. It doesn't matter. Even if it's not a function, you can still write its domain and range. So for here, I wanna start with domain. Remember domain is my X value, so I'm reading left to right. So the leftmost X value that I see is, I'm gonna have to zoom in here, negative one, two, three, four, five, six, seven. Negative seven is the leftmost X value. Do I include that value? I sure do because there's a solid dot there. That graph goes from negative seven all the way to what? Infinity. Even though this arrow is pointing down, we're not worried about up and down, we're worried about left and right. And it's keeping, uh, it's moving more towards the right. So that's going all the way to infinity. Range now, we're gonna be looking at bottom to top. So if I look at my lowest point on this graph, I come back to this downward pointing arrow. So that means my lowest Y value is gonna be a negative infinity. All the way up to the tippy tippy top. What's the highest Y value on this graph? Well, I need to count. One, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight. Here's where that highest Y value is, and that is at eight. I know it's really kind of hard to see, but is there a solid dot there or an open dot? Well, it's a solid dot because it was a solid line. Erase my markings and you'll see that. Solid line. So that means that Y value of eight is included in our range. Now we can decide, is this a function or not? Does it pass the vertical line test? Yes, it is a function. Again, this would be a great place for you to pause and try to do the rest of the, uh, example one on your own, but I'm gonna keep going. So example two, domain. I'm looking at that leftmost X value, so I need to count. Negative one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, negative seven. There is a solid dot there, so I can include it, so I'm gonna use a bracket, all the way to a positive one, two. Now at that point at positive two for the X value, that is an open dot, so I cannot include that X value of two. For range, I'm going from bottom to top. So what's my lowest Y value? Well, that would be negative one, two, three, four, five, six, right here. Negative six is the lowest Y value. Am I including that Y value? No, because there's an open circle at that Y value of negative six. Going up to the tippy tippy top of my graph, that would be at a positive one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine. And because it's a solid line, I am including that Y value of nine. Again, does it pass the vertical line test? Is this a function? Yes. Immediately, you could probably see that in this third example, it's not gonna be a function. But we can still write the domain and the range of this graph. Leftmost point. The leftmost X value is actually a negative one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight. It's at negative eight, but it's not included. And because this arrow is pointing to the right, I know that it's gonna go on till infinity. My range, 
from bottom to top. My lowest point on this graph is this arrow that's continually going to the right and down. So my lowest y values is actually negative infinity. I go up to my highest y value, and that is gonna be at a positive one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine. This is the highest point on the graph. I'm not including that y value, so I'm gonna use that parenthesis. And then the last one of example one. Is it a function? This one's gonna be a little bit more challenging for you. It passes the vertical line in some parts, but not all parts. What if I were to draw a vertical line right here? I would have just drawn through two points on that graph. So that means that this is not a function. Again, I can still find the domain and the range for it though. So domain, what's my leftmost x value? Well, that would be a negative infinity. And what's my rightmost? A positive infinity. Range, what's my lowest y value? Again, negative infinity. What's my highest? Well, here's where it gets a little tricky. There's a break in our graph. If I go from bottom to top, this is the highest point on this graph, and then there's a break from here to here. There are no y values on my graph here. So I cannot include those numbers in my range. So I'm gonna have to take a little pause. So I go from negative infinity all the way up to zero. Do I include zero? Yes, because it was a solid line. Then I pick back up again at this y value of three. And do I include three? I do because it's a solid dot. And then I continue to go all the way up to infinity. So I'm gonna use that union symbol again to say, hey, I'm going from negative infinity all the way up to zero. That's all these values here but then there's nothing until I start on this second part of the graph. I'm gonna go ahead and stop here for part one. We will pick up on the rest of 1.1 uh, content on the next class period and I'll label it 1.1 part two. See ya then.